before we get into our practice here, um, we'll cover the Yoga Sutras. This gives us more content to our practice uh, than just doing the postures over and over again. And if you're to say that you're going to practice yoga, you should understand what that means. Um, and try to search a little bit deeper for that meaning uh, instead of just doing one part of it. Uh, we will do our postures here, of course. Um, but uh, yoga could be done uh, just seated. That is really the intention of the practice. It's not about touching your toes. It's not about how flexible you are, um, you know, how uh, good in, in shape you are or anything like this. It has nothing to do with that. Basically, yoga is a state of being. And that state is called union, which is what yoga represents. That word represents a state called union. And that's a state where you're completely relaxed physically and mentally. And there's no separation between yourself and all things. Um, and it's, uh, of course, discussed in words, but it's an experience. So you have to deep, uh, look deeply here and dive into the experience and not what I'm even saying but into your own self. So that is how you will find uh, the experience of yoga is by looking into yourself. Now, this text here will help you uh, quite a bit uh, with the guidance uh, to set yourself up into yoga. Now, if you've not been before, um, we've been covering this uh, version here particularly for about two years, and we're only halfway through. So we're going nice and slow. If you're trying to rush the process, uh, you could take much longer in that attempt. So go really, really slow, slower than you would want to normally go. And this is the best way to make progress. If you're trying to rush through something, uh, you know, uh, in our culture, time is money. Um, the, oh, oh uh, this red bike here? Yeah, um, we got a little bike situation over here. I don't know if anybody's red bike is over here. They're trying to move it. If you'll just move it over the side there. That... Oh. Anybody's red bike? <laughs> red bike. Um. Well. Okay. Just count. Thank you for riding your bike in the first place. I mean, there's a lot of bikes over here today. That's really good, Dick. Thank you for coming out on your bike. Um, so, you know, uh, back to what I was saying, you know, we're, our culture is rushing around um, with no end. And so the yoga is really the stopping point where you can return to yourself and return to neutral. It has nothing to do with an external um, situation or anything like this. It's all about coming back into yourself. What the sutras do here. Uh, sutras means lessons or to string together. Um, this guides you into yoga. So step by step, nice and slow. As I cover this, feel free to have any position. You can sit tall in meditation. Uh, you can lay on the back, and you can certainly stretch if you want to move around. Uh, also, if you can't hear me, uh, you can always come in a little closer. Uh, there's some space here on the side as well. Um, so quick progression of where we're at. Two weeks back, we finished the eight limbs of the yoga process. The eight limb uh, practice here is not for every person. This is for someone who's very dedicated to the experience. And uh, with such dedication, there has been much repetition. With the repetition, the yoga begins to uh, show up more clearly in your daily life and through your actions. And uh, so it changes the personality to a degree where perhaps, you know, maybe you're not as defensive or... Um, you know, you're not really clinging to who you think you are or who you thought you were. You can maybe let go of some of the old stories you carry around. Um, and instead, you're returning to yourself right now. And so that's really uh, the key way to look at it. Um, now, the eight limb process is quite advanced. It begins first with assessing your habits. It doesn't say exactly what your habits um, should or should not be, but it gives you some guidance. Um, and so basically, if you're trying to practice meditation and you're mentally distracted constantly, you need to assess those distractions and try to overcome them so that you can move towards meditation. So if you're trying to practice meditation, the mind is all over the place. See what that is. What's the root of all of that distraction? It's different for every person. So you have to kind of check on yourself, of course. 
Now, once you kind of assess your habits, then he reveals the position, which should be steady and comfortable. It's the seated position only in this type of yoga. This is the Raja Yoga. From there, he gives you breathing techniques. And then he teaches you to bring your senses back into yourself, so you're not externalizing. Uh, but instead, you're directing all of your attention and focus back into yourself. Then he guides us into the final three. And I'll cover those real quick here. The sixth limb is concentration. Concentration is to hold the mind still on one single point or thought. You are fixing the mind. Now, when you're practicing concentration in the beginning, there will be many distractions. Let's say you're sitting here trying to practice your uh, focus. All of a sudden, you begin to think of something from yesterday. Now, all you have to do is realize, ah, I got distracted, and then come right back to your meditation. You're doing that on repeat over and over again. In the beginning, the period of meditation or the, the concentration there will be very short, but it will lengthen. So just practice, repeat, go easy on yourself, and again, go slow. Try not to force anything here. So concentration held leads you into the seventh limb, which is meditation. Meditation is a higher form of concentration, and it is, again, to hold the mind still. But in meditation, you have overcome your distractions. So you're holding still peacefully with the body still and the mind still. Once you've held meditation over a period of time, you enter the eighth limb, which is called samadhi. And samadhi is the most advanced point thus far in the text. Samadhi is basically where you have held the object so clearly in the mind. Let's say it's a, a symbol uh, or a thought. It's so clear in the mind that you have lost your own personal consciousness. And that means basically that you are not aware um, of your body, uh, of your opinions, of who you think you are and all of these parts. So instead, you're holding the mind so perfectly still on the object that that alone is shining in the mind. And that is samadhi. Then last week we covered the sutra following the eighth limb, uh, which is called samyama. And samyama is the combination of those three. Concentration, six, meditation, seven, samadhi, eight. That constitutes some yama. That's the state where you've basically mastered the thinking and you can redirect the mind at will to focus on the exact point that you're ready for. Now we'll go further here today. Uh, following that verse, Sutra 2.5, by mastering some yama, the higher consciousness dawns. Author's notes are fantastic. Now, if you do want to really get into your practice, get this version uh, I have it on my website. You can also take a picture after class. Uh, this is from a master. He is giving his account um, from Patanjali, who was the master way in the past. So this guy had also mastered all of these techniques. Here's his account. When contemplation is continued on any object, and when the object becomes very clear, and there is no personal awareness for the time being, it is called the state of samyama rise to higher consciousness of the object of concentration. His example, if meditating on Aum, it manifests uh, itself most clearly in the higher consciousness. Now, this next little uh, paragraph here, he's writing from his perspective, which is quite rare, because usually he's just discussing and giving us the uh, direction. But here he's giving his account, which is very interesting. When I see a thing with the eyes it is sensual consciousness. So when you see something with your eyes, your eyes are opened, that's with the senses, right? When I close my eyes and try to see that object, it is mental consciousness. So you're looking at an object, close the eyes, and there's still that image uh, behind the mind's eye there, or, or just behind the eyelids held in the mind's eye. So you're staring at something, uh, let's say you're looking at the sun for just a second, you close your eyes, and there's a little circle there uh, that is light um, surrounded by the darkness. So uh, that's more or less the mental space. Um, maybe so even um, when you're uh, you know, looking at a, a memory or something like this, it's something that's kind of being played in the mind. So this is the mental space. And then he says, uh, when that object, and his example again, Om, comes in the form of a shadow, it is deeper consciousness. When suddenly it shines forth inside with all its clarity and vividness, 
it is called higher consciousness. So what he's talking about here is that it's not in the senses, it's not in the eyes, it's not when you close the eyes and you're sitting just behind the eyelids, but it comes up deeper from inside. And this is the higher consciousness that he's trying to discuss. It comes in once the mind is quiet, the body is still, and then you look inside of yourself and it comes up from a, a bit deeper than just in the head or just behind the eyes. It's coming from something else. It's not the senses. Final notes. The student may be aware of one's body, one's existence, one's consciousness, and the things of the external world, but then again one blinks. It resets. The symbol or the object shines clearly, then again the consciousness returns. After that, the object again shines clearly in the mental space. But here the consciousness of the self is lost. So you're not identifying with yourself when you're in that deep state. In that state, there is the manifestation of the higher consciousness. So quite advanced. So reading this week, let's go ahead and meditate on this for just a moment. You can continue with your posture. You can practice seated or on the back, anywhere is good. Important notes for your seated position. If you are seated, lift the torso up as high as you can and then lean back just a little. Now the leaning here helps you find your center point. So you're trying to find uh, your balance. Imagine you're standing on one foot. You have to bounce yourself all the way up and down. It's the same thing with the seated posture. Lean back just a little, lift the torso up, because what happens if you're leaning forward, you begin to slouch. So pull the head back as well just a little. Lightly tuck your chin. Once you find your center point, you will uh, begin to relax the body. So you have to pull yourself into position with your muscles, then the body softens. The shoulders relax, then drop. Arms and hands release. The face completely relaxes. Eyes become soft. Yeah, the brow releases. Now we'll practice at the beginning concentration. So just for one minute here, with all of your attention, focus on your breathing. Make it simple, all of your attention on your breathing for one minute. Perfect. Let's go ahead and begin in a seated position. Continue with your breathing. Make any adjustment, again, finding your center point. Now we'll start with our breathing technique here, pranayama. Basically, I'm just trying to give you different techniques um, so that you can practice this whenever you need it. But uh, timing, you can change all the all the different variations you'd like, any timing works. Uh, just find something that's easy for you to do. And we'll try to do an easy one here. We'll take five inhales through the nostril, through both nostrils. On the fifth inhale, take in as much air as you can. And then when you're holding the breath, you tuck the chin. So that will be on the inhale. Hold the breath as long as you can. Imagine that you're swimming, you're underwater, you're holding the breath, you're trying to lengthen the breath. Once it's uncomfortable, release the chin, exhale, and you'll completely empty out. So you'll blow all of the air out. At the bottom of the exhale, 
You're holding the air out. Tuck the chin again, but this time pull the belly button up. You'll hold that a little bit shorter because it's on the exhale. It won't last as long. Once it's uncomfortable, release the stomach, release the throat, and again, the five count inhale. So we'll do probably just four rounds here and try to make your breath really long. You can follow my count or go on your own counting. Lengthen the torso. Begin five inhales through the nose. Tuck the chin, hold it. Release the chin, exhale. Empty out. Tuck the chin, belly button pulls up. Release the stomach and chin, five count inhale. Tuck the chin, hold it. Release the chin. Tuck the chin, belly button pulls up on the exhale, hold. Release the stomach and chin, inhale. Normal breathing. All right, we'll start our movements at the top. Loosen your neck. Now, during our physical practice, it's important that you're listening to yourself. You're your own expert. Just go very easy on the postures. If something does not feel right to you, please skip. You can also modify any position. And if you have your own variation, feel free to take that as well. This is time for yourself. Just go easy on the body. Now moving into the torso, we'll go side to side. Getting into circles, move the shoulders. further, 
reach the arms around. Check on your range of motion. Just look for any tight point you might have in the body. Going back to our center, cross the legs the other way so that we can balance the hips and return to your tall posture. Okay, now take the right hand out to the side, reach out here, lengthen it, extend the hand or touch the forearm down, left arm takes big circles, full range here, touch the mat, all the way over. the left arm over the top, hold the side stretch. Coming back up, left hand to the side, lengthen, reaching out, and forearm down if you'd like, big circles. And reaching over the top. Slide the legs forward. Twist the legs up. Lean in. Right, feet together. Right foot comes in. Left leg stays out straight. Square the torso over the left leg. I'll give you the secret here. If you go too quickly into the stretch, you won't get the release. So, inhale at the top, go up my face. Exhale, begin to move forward. Slower. We're going to feel the leg. Feel the release in the hamstring. Go easy. Once you get to a certain point, you'll get the back stretch. So it's about five breaths to get into the position, and then five for meditation. Coming back up. Now bring your right foot to the floor, left leg stays straight, right foot steps over the left leg. Setting up for a twist, pull the knee in, lengthen, inhale. Exhale the right hand to the base of the spine. Left arm crosses over, you can hug the knee or go to the inside. Sit tall, look over your right shoulder.
moving back to our center. Let the right knee drop. And you'll slide the right ankle just above the left knee. Hands under the shoulders, lean back. Left foot to the floor. And then kick the left leg straight. Left foot up. Holding there, or arms up. Lengthen your torso. Touch. And release. Right foot steps back over. Left leg stays out straight. Now my right foot is about hip distance apart to the side of the left knee. Straight down this way. Left hand goes under your shoulder. Fingers point to the left. When you're ready here, push into the floor. You can lift up. Left foot drops out to the side. Right arm over the top. Big stretch. Now optional toe touch, check your balance, optional, left foot up, right hand to the toe, and release coming down, circle the left wrist, now lean to your left side, grab the right ankle, right knee comes out to the side here, go easy. Now you can stay here up top, if you want to go further, lean back here, staying on the hand or touch the forearm down. You can even lay all the way back. Coming back up, lean back to your left side, slide the right leg straight, return to center, twist the legs, now the other side, feet together, left foot comes in, square the torso over the right, inhale lengthen, exhale extra slow. A feel for the stretch. And you're trying to relax the muscle group, so just find the lightest point of tension. Breathe, relax. Coming back up, left foot to the floor, left foot steps over, right leg stays straight, lengthen your torso, inhale, exhale twist to the left, left hand behind you, 
looking over your left shoulder. Back to center. Now the left knee drops. Take the ankle just above the knee. Lean back. Hands to the floor, right foot in. And kick the leg straight. Holding there, arms up. Lengthen. Optional toe touch. Yeah, bring it down. Left foot steps over. Left foot to the side of the right knee about hip distance apart. Right hand under your shoulder, fingers point to the right. When you're ready, push into the floor, you can lift up. Right foot drops out. Left arm over, big reach. touch. Right foot up. Left hand to your toe. Release. Circle the wrist. Now leaning to the right side. Left knee comes out. Holding up top, or you can lean back. Coming back up, lean back to the right, left leg slides out. All right, moving into our tabletop. You can go straight over your legs or to the side, any way works here. Getting to all fours. Fingers spread wide, hands are even, about shoulder width apart. It's called bone stacking. Wrist is directly under the shoulder socket on both sides. Get to the toes. Right, we'll move into downward dog, lift up the hips. Straighten the legs, push the heart down and back as you lift the hips up higher. Looking to your toes, loosen the neck. Move the head yes and no. Let your face relax. Bending into the knees side to side. All right, back 
to our center. From here, kick your right leg straight up, reach as high as you can. Slow transition, inhale up the top. Exhale, take a big controlled step with the right foot to the outside of the right hand, soft landing. Take a few steps if you need to. Big lunge position here, right knee is over the ankle, bone stacking there. Left shoulder is directly over your left wrist. Right arm comes up, big twist. Once here, kick back through the left heel. Hands down, left knee touches down. From here, lift up, both hands to the right knee. Little back bend here, lift the heart, lengthen all the way to the top of the head, and bend back just a little. Another variation if you'd like to go further. Right hand goes back to the left leg. You might start with the fingertips. You can just touch. Maybe to the heel. Take both hands down, send the hips back, straighten your right leg, and your right foot moves closer to the midline, then the hands come closer back towards you. Now your right leg relax, rock side to side a few times. Circle the ankle. Bring the toes straight back. Toes to the floor. Toes to the midline. Toes to the outside. Back to center. Today we'll have vertical splits go really slow. It's quite a delicate posture. And just begin by inching the right foot forward. You can stay there, that's fine. If you're going further, you can inch the left knee back. You can put most of the weight into the hands to begin.
slowly coming back up. Take your time on your exit. You can inch the left knee forward first. Once you have some space here, both hands to the inside of the right leg. Then the right leg slides back to our table. Reset the posture, bone stack. To the toes, back to downward dog. Any movement here, again, bend the knees, loosen the neck. Back to our center. Now the left side, kick the left leg straight up. Exhale, controlled step, left foot to the outside of the left hand, soft landing. Left knee over the ankle, about a 90 on the left knee, right shoulder over the wrist, left arm up. Kick back through the right heel. Hands down, right knee down. Coming up, both hands to the left knee. Back bend, lift the heart. Bend back just a little. Again, you can hold here if you're going further. Left hand back to the right leg. Coming up, hands down, I send the hips back, straighten the left leg, left foot moves closer to the midline, and hands in closer, left leg relaxes, rock side to side. Now toes straight back. Toes to the floor. Toes to the midline. Back to center. Moving into splits, go really slow. Take your time, just a light stretch here.
slowly coming back up. We'll make our transition here to the back. You call it forward. You go straight over the legs or to the side. Easy kicks, loosen the legs. And circle the legs. Shake them out. Back massage, rocking out the hip line side to side. And we'll finish up here with the twist. Take both knees to the right. Any variation with the legs, then look to the left. Switching sides, legs to the left, looking to your right. Going back to center. I'll move into our final meditative position. I might rock the knees to reset the spine, first centering there, all the way to the top of the head. Once here, you can slide the legs out straight toward the diamond shape. You can even practice seated meditation if you prefer. Any arm position, I'd recommend palms facing up. Softly close the eyes. Now we're setting up here for final relaxation. You can finish any posture that you're in. Now just as we practiced before, the body must be completely relaxed. So let the body release first. There's no tension in the hands or the feet. You're laying on your back or seated. Now to enter meditation again, we have to hold our mind still. So you can pick your own point if you'd like, any uh, mental point, any thought you'd like, or quite simply following your breath again. Anyways, find you. Let us practice our meditation as long as possible. Hold your mind still on your breathing or your own thought. Challenge yourself. See if you can hold the mind still.
take three final breaths. Begin to wake the body. Move your fingers and toes, wrists and the ankles. Move your head. Any final movement you'd like. You can finish on the back or find a seat. Any way is good. You can relax longer if you have some time. Appreciate y'all very much for coming out. Thanks for joining me. Uh, in case you have not heard yet, I'm just teaching two more of these classes, and then I will pass the torch on to somebody else. Uh, so I will be moving uh, out of Texas uh, in about mid-August. So. Uh, it's really been an honor to teach all of you, um, some of you I've had for years, um, and I really, really, truly appreciate it. It's an honor to share uh, yoga and to speak about yoga uh, and to have your attention. You know, it, it really pleases me, and I look forward to this every uh, weekend, and I have for the longest time, and I'll truly miss it when I'm gone. Um, I'd love to stay in touch. Uh, I have some business cards up here, my website, yogisense.com. I basically take a photo of the class and put it online after uh, of our meditation every week. I put up the summary of the uh, philosophy that we covered so that you can kind of follow along there uh, at a nice slow pace. You can also look back at all the previous ones we covered. I also filmed the class today, uh, so eventually I'll put it um, on YouTube so that we can all kind of look back and enjoy uh, what we all came out and shared. Uh, it's great. I mean, we have a beautiful community out here. Uh, you know, it couldn't be better. We all come out, we sweat together. You know, my mat's like pretty hot, um, so I'm sure all everyone's stuff is uh, quite hot. But you know, it, it's it's great. We come out here, we push through it, um, and we're in probably the most beautiful place in uh, Houston, in my opinion, right in the center here at Discovery Green. Um, thank you um, on behalf of the park. Um, everything here is basically run through donation, more or less. Um, that includes the um, lawn that we're sitting on. They have to redo uh, the grass every season. Um, all the landscaping, all of this is through donation. If you ever feel the need uh, to give back to the community, you certainly can. They recommend going on online uh, to do so on their website, Discovery Green. You can also do it in the office over there that runs the whole park. Um, look at their events coming up. They have movies on the green, uh, all sorts of festivals and events uh, that I can't really even keep up with. So uh, it's a beautiful place, and uh, thank you all for coming out.